Yes. There he is. Hey, hey. Is Hi the sound you. working okay? Perfect. Great. Yeah. So I'm going to leave the stage and uh, leave it to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, hello everybody. In this presentation, you will learn about Semantic Mediarchy 4.0. You'll also learn what happened since the last release, how you can get help and interact with the community, and the various ways that you can contribute to the project. I am Jeroen de Dau, and I've been maintainer of the Semantic Mediarchy project now for over the last 10 years. I run Professional Wiki, which is a MediaWiki hosting and consulting company. We'll start by having a look at what the numbers are. At the moment, we are getting just over 100 daily installations via Composer. And uh, this includes both installs and updates. Um, and so this doesn't mean we have 100 new semantic wikis being created every day uh, since it includes these updates. And it also includes uh, commands that are coming from testing systems. Still, uh, there is a nice uptrend that we can see here. And we've just surpassed the 200,000 total installations via Composer. So uh, now we'll have a look at what happened uh, in numbers again since the last stable semantic main IQ release, that was 3.2.3. We had over 275 commits by 33 amazing contributors changing a grand total of over 1,000 files. And that's just for Semantic Mediarchy itself. That doesn't include uh, changes to all the various extensions and tools that are part of the Semantic Mediarchy ecosystem. We've also got the new logo. And a big thank you there to Alistair for creating the logo and to Bernard for kicking off the process. So what's the deal with Semantic Mediarchy 4.0? This release is mainly focused on providing MediaWiki compatibility. That's really the main thing that it brings. And that includes support for MediaWiki 1.36 and MediaWiki 1.37. We've also started work on support for MediaWiki 1.38, which itself is not released yet. And uh, then on the other side of the compatibility spectrum, we have uh, that MediaWiki 1.35 will be required as a minimum for Semantic Mediaki 4.0. Uh, here I should again mention briefly uh, the release policy change that we made since it comes in effect with Semantic Mediaki 4. And uh, we very appropriately follow semantic versioning, meaning that the version numbers consist out of three meaningful parts, major, minor, and patch. With patch releases can only contain fixes, minor releases can contain fixes and features, and major releases can include everything, including breaking changes. So the thing we changed and codified with the new release policy is what we consider to be breaking changes. So obviously, removing a feature is a breaking change. And uh, making a breaking change to a feature itself, like uh, some syntax of wiki text, is also a breaking change. Um, and what we've newly included in this is requiring a new version of MediaWiki. So for instance, with Semantic MediaWiki 4, we are now requiring MediaWiki 135. So that's part of why this is a major release and why we're switching to 4.0 rather than to 3.3. And uh, the same goes for uh, requiring the running of update.php or some other maintenance scripts like the rebuilt data scripts. The consequence of this is that it now will be very easy to update to new uh, patch releases or to new minor releases. So if Semantic Mediaki 4.1 comes out or 4.2 or 4.2.5, uh, you will be able to just do a Composer update without needing to worry that you need a new version of MediaWiki 
or that you need to run update.php. And the idea here then is also that we will be able to make these releases more frequently since it will be a lot easier to deal with them. Semantic Mediarchy 4 also comes with a number of other changes. Uh, for instance, there ha have been improvements to Elasticsearch. This includes some random fixes and some improvements uh, compatibility-wise with very recent versions of Elastic. Uh, there are no big new flashy features in this release. Um, you will get a full list of the things that changed, of course, in the release notes once the release happens. And since it hasn't happened yet, there is still time for you to contribute. To upgrade to Semantic Mediarchy 4, you will, first of all, need to have uh, Mediarchy 1.35 or later, and you will need PHP 7.4. At least uh, the PHP requirement here is uh, what we have at the moment. We might still reduce this to 7.3, especially if we get requests from people. For this particular release, there will actually be no need to run update.php, but you will need to now call wf load extension in your local settings file, like you need to do with many other extensions already. There is no fixed date yet for the 4.0 release. Uh, here we do want to not wait too long so it's going to happen in the next weeks say before the end of january uh, the reason for this being that at the moment there is no good semantic minarchy release for minarchy 136 and 137 and over the last months we've been recommending people to just run the development version since it works better than the latest stable semantic minarchy release for these versions of minarchy which is obviously not a good place to be at hence we want to have the next release soon at the same time we also want to be really sure that it does work properly with minarchy 137 and uh while we've had a number of people already run it on this version without any big problems, uh, the automated tests do not yet work with this version. So that's uh, the thing that we're mainly focusing on at the moment. And that's an area where your contributions are definitely also welcome, either to help with migrating the tests or to test uh, the development version of Semantic Minarchy with Minarchy 137 to make sure it functions properly on your environment. So now let's have a look at how you can contribute and how you can get help from the community or otherwise interact with it. We have a relatively new Semantic Mediawiki chat uh, to uh, a lot of people don't know about it yet. Um, and you can join this either via the web, so have a browser tab open on this chat, or you can join via a mobile client. And we have this chat both on Elements and on Telegram. And these are both linked together. So you only need to join one of them to get all the chat messages. Then, of course, there is the mailing list, which will be linked later. And it's linked from our homepage. And there is the Semantic Mediarchy Issue Tracker, which we will have a look at in a second. There is many different ways that you can contribute. And there is something here for everybody disregarding of your skill set. So uh, here we have our GitHub page. And uh, on the top left here, you have the issue tracker and the list of code changes that people submitted. So obviously, if you're a developer, this is the place to be. Here, you will submit your code changes. Uh, but that's not the only thing you can do. It's also very helpful if you look at code changes submitted by other people to review them, uh, either from a code quality perspective or a correctness perspective. And you can do this even if you're not a technical uh, person, if you don't know programming. You can look at the changes that people are making, or rather the descriptions of those changes, and see if these make sense from a user level. And there you might, for instance, have suggestions on how to do, do things better. Perhaps uh, somebody's adding a new parameter, and you think the name of this parameter is confusing, and you have a better suggestion for it. So on the issue tracker, you can submit both uh, bugs that you're into. That's very nice to do. And you can also request new features. And again, here, you can participate in what other people are posting. 
Um, so if somebody is requesting a new feature, then you can join the discussion on, uh, does this make sense for your use case? Uh, maybe it causes problems for your use case or you see a better way of doing things. So it's very valuable to get an idea of how many people are interested in a certain thing. So even just giving a thumbs up there can be quite nice. And then if you want to keep up to date with everything that's happening here, so the new feature requests, bugs, and uh, new code changes that people are submitting, you can use the, uh, watch, the watch functionality at the top right. So some additional things that you can do, especially as a, um, somebody that's not a developer, is you can provide support on the mailing list or on the chats that we mentioned earlier. And you can do things like providing translations uh, via translatewiki.net. So to round up here, uh, of course, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is where we will post the videos of the conference after the conference is done. So also hit the subscribe uh, or the notification bell. And uh, follow us on Twitter if you're not already, uh, at SemanticMW. This is where we post uh, announcements of uh, new features, new releases, conferences, and everything else that's related to Semantic Minowiki. Then uh, to close the presentation, I would like to give a big thank you to everybody that contributed to the project. What we have here on the right-hand side are the people that made code changes to the main Semantic MediaWiki Git repository. So of course, the thank you extends also to people that uh, provided support on the chat or on the mailing list, people that improved the documentation. And then finally, I would like to thank the conference organizers and then you for your attention. If there are any questions, then please post them in the chat. And uh, if not right now, then you can still reach out to me via one of the public chat rooms, or feel free to send me a direct message. Jeroen, I have one uh, question. Um, are there any plans to move to GitLab? Uh, I personally have no plans to move to GitLab, and I don't see the big appeal of this. This would be more work, and it would not immediately provide uh, value to the users of the software. All right, I think uh, a big thank you is in place for you, Jeroen, and, um, and, and your great work. And I think uh, it's very good to, uh, to, to make it very clear how people can uh, contribute. So thank you for that. Um, And updates in the interface, right? Just technical updates. Oh, there's there's one one uh, question coming. Uh, yes, that's so, correct. Uh, there are no updates to the user interfaces provided by Semantic Minowiki. And there are also no breaking changes on the user level. So the wiki text syntax all stays what it was before. Thanks very much, uh, Jeroen clear presentation and a clear message. Thumbs up. Okay, right. Bernard. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.